about um, practicing <coughs> representation and what might I Ukraine and how they changed and um, how I think um, we could make a step toward, uh, towards understanding why they changed and I think many things I will say are also connected to what um, Jana talked about in a way. And it would be maybe interesting to draw connections. So around two weeks ago, Volodymyr Zelensky was inaugurated as the new president of Ukraine. Since his political program has been rather vague during the election campaign, much attention was drawn to the content of his inauguration speech. Noticeably, the issue of fighting corruption, with which he had appealed to his electorate earlier, was rather absent in his talk. Instead, he emphasized the importance of ending the war in Donbass. Only one day later, the newly appointed head of the presidential administration, Andriy Bogdan, announced on Ukrainian television our first step towards resolving the military conflict could look like. A possible, agree possible agreement with the Russian Federation should become a matter of a nationwide referendum. I quote, After all, not only, not only politicians, but also people should speak. We are considering an option of putting the issue of reaching a peaceful agreement with Russia to a nationwide referendum so that not only lawmakers could vote and the president could decide. It is the people of Ukraine who could decide. It is questionable how likely it is that the attempt to conduct such a referendum materializes. Nevertheless, Bogdan's announcement provoked some strong reactions. Many commentators were convinced that a referendum would send, send wrong signs in the direction of the Russian Federation or saw it as a possible threat to Ukraine's sovereignty. Zelensky is not the first to propose a referendum as a means to mobilize people around an issue in post-Maidan Ukraine. Since the Maidan Revolution of 2014, several possible referenda were discussed, focusing mainly on issues surrounding Ukraine's geopolitical orientation. For instance, some wanted to have the population vote on the amendments to the Ukrainian constitution, which prescribed Ukrainians' paths toward accessing the European Union and joining the NATO. In the course of the debate about decentralization reforms, an equally contested topic, the existing law about the implementation of nationwide referenda was subject to controversial debates. Thus, Zelensky and his team, who had promoted the increased use of referendum already in the election campaign, provide only the most recent and probably most prominent example of a distinctive trend that has become visible in Ukraine's public sphere. This raises the question how we can explain the race importance of referenda in both Ukrainian public sphere and leading politicians' rhetorics. What does this mean for the relationship between political representation and political participation? Furthermore, what does this tell us about the role of the people and their popular will in countries with ongoing military conflicts? More generally, in my project, I try to inquire into the relation between revolutions or mass protests and political representation and referenda on the other side. In my talk today, I will make a first step towards answering those questions. By drawing on political theory, I will elaborate on the notion of political representation and the connection between political representation and the construction of the people. I will show that referenda do not fit, really fit into existing conceptualizations. Neither can they be sufficiently conceptualized as strategic tools mainly used by politicians to mobilize support, nor as poor manifestations of bottom-up direct democracy. Instead, I will sketch a different approach. I will then turn to the case of Ukraine and shortly recall why referenda became a major issue in the revolutionary situation of the Maidan protest in 2014. Subsequently, I will come back to contemporary developments and put forward some thoughts why we should study recent practices of political representation and its discursive patterns in order to understand the changing state-society relationships and the construction of political collectives in Ukraine. So, political representation. Uh, political representation was and is often equated with representative democracy, that is a political system where elected representatives ideally correspond to given preferences of the constituents. However, new approaches in post-structuralist political theory highlight that constituents are not a pre-given people with preformed preferences which come to be called popular will. According to Claude IV and Pierre Rosamalon, the people and their will are necessar necessarily indeterminate and emerge only through a process of active construction. 
Therefore, the people cannot constitute the base of popular sovereignty, nor the source of political legitimacy. Also, solves this problem by conceptualizing the people as an effect of, poli of political representation, rather than the source of the later. Thus, the people does not pre-exist, but is constructed by different means of representation. In other words, political representation is a way of performing the people, may be through protest movements on the streets, in parliament, or as public opinion. Although Rosamano does not make this point explicit, performing in this regard can be understood as a co-constitutive process, as has been conceptualized by Judith Butler. The people constitute and are constituted at the same time. Accordingly, Rosamano dismisses the notion of an all-embracing version of the people. Instead, he distinguishes between three forms of it, namely the ideal people, which is abstract and essential in the constitution, the electoral people, which is constructed and represented through elections, and the social people, which with its real presence, for instance, in demonstrations, protests, or administrative procedures. Now, referenda do not really fit into the three different forms of Rosamano's people. They share certain features of the electoral people, most importantly because they produce numerical outcomes and suggest a clear picture of the people and their majorities and minorities. On the other hand, Referenda are a way of constructing the pure people, as has been argued by Stephen Tien in his recent re reconsideration of the use of referenda in the Catalonian question. Tien underscores the importance of the fact that through a referendum, the people speak directly and collectively and directly participate in political decision making. I quote The constitutional referendum, by definition, implicates an anterior act of democratic border choice. The framing of the self who will perform an act of constitutional self-determination and who will, in doing so, express, expressly articulate itself as a constitutional people. In this respect, all referendums are potentially constitutive, since they bring back the people, the ultim ultim ultimate, ultimate source sorry, of democratic legitimacy for the polity. There are two dimensions to this bond we talk. The first conceptualizes the polity as a physical space, to the second imagines it as a group of people. Thus, referenda, although they are often initiated by politicians, symbolize an enactment of the pure people representing themselves. Yet, why do we need political representation in the first place? Embracing, embracing the right definition of political representation I outlined before, we can understand it as a practice which makes constituencies of people visible. Societies need practices of political representation as a way of constructing the people, making sense of the society, and giving meaning to it. If we understand political representation as a performative, co-constitutive process, it is an interdependent relationship. It does not only produce legitimacy for the political system, but also creates social identities. These identities connect the state and the people through political participation and mobilization. Thus, voting events and street protests are different modes of acting with people which mobilize people around political issues and create competing different social identities at the same time. The second important function of practices of political representation is that they produce representational claims, as has been elaborated by Richard Sowert. Sowert's approach contributes to the aspect of different audiences to which different representational claims are directed. According to this model, a maker of a representational claim offers, offers it to an audience, which can accept or also reject the claim. Making representational claims is also a way of describing political legitimacy. Sowart gives different examples of makers of representational claims, like politicians and again social movements or interest groups. Yet, when it comes to referenda, he remains rather vague, stating that Referendums are always in a way connected to the political system and therefore also make representational claims. To me, this vagueness seems quite typical for existing approaches to political representation when it comes to referenda. I argue that this vague and even contradictory character of referenda makes them a particularly interesting object for studying processes of political representation. Putting forward the picture of the few people, they avoid constructing a clear picture of the constituency while at the same time making visible the popular role on a certain issue. Now, what do these conceptual considerations mean for my case study, that is post-Maidan Ukraine? 
as the term post minor Ukraine suggests, these changes started in 2014. Therefore, I will shortly recall this revolutionary situation. In February 2014, the mass protests on Kiev's Milan Square ended violently with the so called Milan Massacre, the subsequent escape and extra constitutional removal of the incumbent president, Mikhail Yanukovych. Ukraine entered into what Charles Stevie has conceptualized as a revolutionary situation. That means that um, when, when a government which exists and <coughs> until then had been under control of a single sovereign polity, um, becomes the object of competing claims made by one or other groups. This group might also take over part of the state apparatus, and that's uh, exactly what we witnessed in Ukraine in February 2014. Um, in the course of the so-called Russian Spring, that is the anti minor protest in the southeast, which included the seizure of regional administrative buildings, several others in the southeast of Ukraine declared their independence. The intervention and annexation of Crimea by the Russian Federation fundamentally questions the sovereignty and integrity of the Ukrainian state, where foreigner played a major role in, in this conflictual situation. The highly contested referendum in the course of the annexation of Crimea and the referendum accompanying the establishment of the self-proclaimed People's Republics in Luhansk and Donetsk, which were even more chaotic, chaotic and dubitable than the one in Crimea. In spite of this, referenda cannot be reduced to top-down tools instrumentalized by pro-Russian separatists or Russia. Anti-Minor protesters in several cities in the southeast demanded a referendum on decentralization. And, interestingly, the Ukrainian parliament, um, the interim parliament, uh, seriously discussed the necess necessity to conduct a nationwide referendum which is to legitimize the post minor order. I will focus on the later points, points since I argue that it is a crucial event for the change in practices of political representation and describing political legitimacy in Ukraine. So, back in February 2014, Senator Ruta, who had been appointed as new head of the Ukrainian Oblast Administration in Donetsk, after the Maidan Revolution, was the first political representative to call to, to call for asking the local population about their views on national issues, especially on the question of national unity. In February 2014, he proposed a referendum or maybe a special survey as a good measure to calm down the situation in Donetsk. His initiative gave major attention after the annexation of Crimea and the referendum in Crimea, and the possibility of a referendum or a special survey was also discussed in the Vehov Narada, the Ukrainian parliament. The initial idea of a survey in the only Donbass region transformed into the proposal of a nationwide referendum, which was to be held on the same day as the presidential election, elections in May. In the discussions in the Vehov Narada, both functions of referenda, namely the construction of a pure people involving physical mobilization of constituencies and the role of making representation claims were present. Foremost deputies from the south eastern oblast considered the referendum or special survey, as it was alternatively called, as a possibility to integrate larger parts of society into the ongoing political changes. This position is illustrated by a quote by Sehi Kazyanov, a politician from Kharkiv, made in the Hrovna Rada. Road. The situation in the eastern part of the country is getting more heated every day. In my opinion, a nationwide referendum on the day of the presidential elections in May is a good idea to let the people participate. Everybody. There were many who did not protest on the Maidan after all. Interestingly, Kazanov also, also highlights the fact that it might be important whether the population participated in the Maidan protest or not. A referendum thus was seen as a measure to represent those who had not become part of the social people that constituted itself on the Maya. Furthermore, a referendum was seen as a possibility to re-establish trust in the politicians and establish a dialogue, as many call it, with the population. A referendum should also make claims to external audiences. In this context, deputies stress the need to show the unity of the country on which Ukraine's territorial integrity would depend. As interim President Alexander Tuchinov stressed, the whole world should see that, I quote, Ukraine is a sovereign, independent, democratic, and united European country. Furthermore, demonstrating national unity was important in regard to Russia as an external actor in the conflict. I quote, 
Let us show that we are a united country. This is the best way to prevent war and show the Russian Federation that we are strong and united. In the end, the idea of, re of a referendum did not materialize because the parliament did not reach consensus about the wording of the possible, possible questions, also very important if we speak about, re about referendum. Um, so a majority of deputies voted against the proposal. However, I argue that it is in this revolutionary situation situation that Rafana gave major significance in the conflict dynamic between pro-Russian separatists, Ukrainian state, Maidan protesters, Russian Federation, because popular serenity was questioned and provoked an urgent need to figure out popular will and the people. In a situation where multiple sovereignties existed, there was an increased need to make the people appear as a human agent instead of constructing specific constituencies. This, I think, has significant implications for the future political developments in post and Ukraine, coming back. Due to the de facto territorial changes of 2014, the post maidan political landscape in Ukraine has been deeply shaken and all constituencies and representational claims made to them have been questions. Mobilizing established pro-Russian or pro-Ukrainian constituencies, whatever that means, has simply turned infeasible. One reason for Zelensky's success in the presidential elections was his inclusive rhetorics, which appealed to very different parts of the population. Furthermore, Zelensky framed referenda as a way to improve Ukraine's democracy. While inclusive rhetorics, as well as more democratic participation, can certainly be evaluated very positively from a normative perspective, they still raise certain questions regarding practices of political representation. Rosamar Law reminds us that only through political representation society can achieve freedom and constitute itself as a collective. In this light, referenda, which promise a shortcut to enact the pure people, can be interpreted as a way of blurring processes of political representation. The role of the maker of representation and claims remains empty, although it is obvious that referenda are always initiated by someone. Implementing referenda and letting the people decide can thus only complement other practices of political representation. Important is, of course, also the function of claim making to, to, other, deputies, uh, to other deputies through speaking about possible referenda, because I think in this way it is why relying on the will of the people, um, it is possible to bring topics into the debate which um, without relying on the will of the people would be maybe too controversial, which we can see on the example I uh, named in the beginning, like um, starting negotiations, negotiations with Russia. Yeah. Um, so I come to a short conclusion. Um, I could only highlight very few aspects now uh, of how to reconsider the relationship between polit political representation and referenda in current Ukraine. And um, one of the aspects which I didn't mention, but which is also, um, I think, very important to consider, is um, the question in how far the increased role of uh, referenda um, is also practiced aimed at avoiding uh, a new Maidan or fear of a new Maidan by mobilizing the people um, and uh, yeah, letting them participate through referenda. And um, yeah, to shed more light on this ongoing dynamics, um, we have also to study the rhetorics and discuss the patterns, which I couldn't mention now. Um, yeah, and I, I think the upcoming parliamentary elections will also be an interesting case, starting also with, uh, already with the election of uh, Zelensky and also um, with Svetlana Vakashuk, frontman of the popular rock band Okan Ezek, who just um, founded his new party, which is called uh, Volos Voice and also stresses like uh, how um, the individual the people are kind of important in the process and should uh, participate. Um, yeah, and Levinsky's party is Luga Nahorda, servant of the people on the other hand. Yeah, thank you. So thank you for the talks and now we have the floor open for questions.
So what kind of general conclusions can you make from exactly the small digits of maps that you have? Because so I, I noticed you know, in several questions that we have, for example, about is there a standard of using the colors uh, to present uh, you know, the Academy. Uh, is it like is there a kind of standards color, colorization of, of Ukrainian maps there, or is it always kind of based on the idea of who will be the, the viewer? Uh, and is there uh, how, how is the social maps on the social media? Because you are talking about official media, sometimes borrowing maps from uh, from from social media, but but. I would be very interested in exact, exactly what's like happening in the, the social media Facebook contacts here. Although perhaps not the last thing because we probably have a very good topic. Uh, so exactly, so could you yeah. say something? Well, uh, concerning social media, I don't follow that much. Uh, they, how they are discriminated, but they are perfect. Uh, the Felix for discrimination in social media just uh, is like a form of the end, so you don't need to post the uh, just uh, Ukraine failed uh, state or uh, Yes, and uh, I don't know if you follow so much uh, uh, in social media, for example, Facebook uh, um, pages of Novorossi or whatever. So usually there are uh, in such groups of pages where these maps are uh, disseminated. Uh, uh, what uh, recently I uh, was yeah, uh, analyzing or looking for uh, TV programs and YouTube. Uh, channels of uh, yeah, Russian uh, uh, TV <coughs> and uh, also of Russia and uh, from these various online uh, articles. So social media still I didn't really um, uh, work with it and look how they are disseminated, uh, but yes, for sure. Uh, and, uh, concerning the colors, for example, it's interesting that uh, uh, this uh, these colors, okay, you can uh, uh, paint in uh, different colors, and actually, it is very <laughs> integrative for this uh, map making. Uh, everybody, everybody, everybody can make it on its own, and uh, uh, everybody uh, does it with different colors usually. Usually, Galicia, for example, is red and uh, uh, black because uh, it has a reference to the Ukrainian nationalists. Uh, but uh, generally there are no kind of standards and uh, it is uh, also in some way uh, very in inclusive in, in the sense that uh, everybody can understand uh, the, the vision of the country or by its, of Ukraine by its, on its own way, on their own way. Uh, so there are different scenarios usually presented in, uh, um, in Russian media, in online, uh, online uh, articles. So you can imagine everything, actually. Uh, so, if uh, Ukraine would ever, let's say, would uh, be, I don't know, uh, <laughs> would like that, to say, divide it somehow, then it could be, I think, like, thirty variants, and one of them would be already was published, let's say. Um, yeah, and there are some which are actually maps that play a picture, fictive map, maps, they are fictive. Uh, region of Belarusia is not in the historical place of the region of Belarusia. Uh, Galicia is not uh, exactly Galicia, but uh, it's together with the Poland region or together with the Transcapacity of uh, Bukovina. Uh, so there is this uh, strategic essentialism of um, presenting the regions uh, also not, not only in the articles, but uh, yeah, trying to close the region or uh, kind of uh, show it, uh, uh, you know, what Western Ukraine is usually uh, Galicia, and this uh, way there is very negative uh, uh, image of Galicia, so when this whole conflict is presented in uh, different, um, yeah, propaganda, let's say, uh, books and TV programs as uh, a conflict between Galicia and Russia, one of the examples uh, is the book by Rostislav, Ishinka, Belitsa, Project Navaros, Navaros, Belitsa, or something like this. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of like it's actually uh, there are different historical backgrounds there, uh, and then uh, he comes to the conclusion that it's actually um, the conflict between two regions. So it's inner conflict, uh, and uh, it's kind of his 
historical conflict already or don't um, yeah so this is another question was maybe <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> No, I need to go for it, so, yeah. Yeah, uh, I have a question to so th thanks for this, uh, this presentation. I share very much your uh, skepticism uh, regarding referendums, albeit I think in different grounds. Mm -hmm. What I don't really understand is uh, what would be an alternative uh, to the referendum in that case. Uh, is that uh, are you cautious about those referendums because they uh, kind of embody direct democracy against representative democracy? And if yes, then what would be an alternative, given that uh, not only we have the general price of representation that was on alone himself uh, points, but uh, particularly in Ukraine, mm -hmm. uh, political elites are known to be extremely corrupt, yeah. say hopelessly corrupt. Uh, and what would be a, a different way to uh, to do what Zelensky is trying to do now, to uh, kind of imagine a common political space, yeah. uh, something that has not been done uh, for four or five years. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for your question. Uh, in a way, I think I when I, when I finished uh, um, to prepare my presentation, I was expecting such a question because I think in the end um, it's, it was maybe a little disbalance and could come across as a, a, I, I would argue against a direct democracy in general, which is not which is not the case, mm -hmm. and that's why I, I said at one point also that um, like first of all it is of course a positive thing to introduce um, more uh, measures of direct democracy. Which was also done before, in a way, by Lukashenko, that he introduced, for instance, that people could, make, could write petitions to the president. Mm -hmm. uh, in the whole discussion about the law, about referenda in general, so there, there were some measures. And so, yeah, it's also too, too early, of course, to, to judge what Zelensky is planning to do right now. Um, but in a way, I think the use, like, um, I, I think in a way it's very strategic what they want to do and more related to the fear of the Maidan and kind of implementing, um, like trying to, because he also has this new law which is also connected to about um, impeachment again, against the president so that it be, should, become, should become a law and um, I'm not Can you elaborate on the, the connection between the referendum and the possible of Maidan? Um, I mean, if, 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 if you would have a referendum on, which was not implemented um, in the end, about a possible, um, a possible uh, whether Ukraine should join the Union or not, which was discussed, and then you have a majority voting, I don't know, 60% yes. Then we would have a session. Hmm? Then you would have a session. This is exactly what happened. Yeah. <laughs> so it would not be a good thing to do, maybe, to do it. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. So like, uh, if, if you just, I mean, in general, uh, direct democracy is good, but if you just uh, um, <coughs> discussing it in front of this geopolitical uh, question, which anyway you cannot decide on your own, like whether Ukraine will join the European Union or not, then I think it's rather a way of, 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 of constructing public opinion on them because it has nothing to do with um, participation. It is participation, but it's rather symbolic. Okay, so the, 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 the concern is that perhaps uh, the, the referendum itself can be divided. And then also, I think in his whole rhetoric, Zelensky like is, is not saying what he wants to do about certain topics, but saying okay, let's let people decide. And I'm not really sure, but yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not sure myself. I'm, t I'm trying to grasp your, your position from the issue of criticizing this. Because the issue of referendum is, of course, not, not that, that simple. I mean, you have. Yeah, yeah, it's very complicated. On the one hand, you have Schmidt, of whom it is a, an institution of uh, direct democracy, but uh, at, at, the same, at the same time, uh, he imagines uh, it to, to be directed by a legislative leader. So that's a kind of combination between uh, direct democracy and, and, and monarchical democracy. Then you have Rosan Ballon, who kind of criticizes that from the standpoint of representative democracy, yeah. but then he himself admits that representative democracy is probably done. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. So I'm trying to, yeah. to figure out what would be the standpoint from which you're criticizing yeah. the yeah. I, I would say I'm not criticizing, but I rather really want to understand what kind of role it plays in, in Ukraine. Right now, it's quite clear that it's important because before the revolution, um, people didn't discuss so much. Yeah, but that's kind of natural reaction. Am I allowed to? Yeah. Okay. That's kind of natural reaction to, to the crisis of representation. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because yes. that's, that's the thing that immediately comes to, to mind when you, when you face a, uh, that bad, bad system of representation. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's just uh, go ahead and vote. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's kind of natural. Uh, yeah, it is. <coughs> I wouldn't say, I wouldn't endorse it, of course. But, uh, I, let's say maybe. Also, um, I, I read what you um, published, or I think it was an interview also about like, opinion polls, for instance, in Russia. And um, so I think it could go rather in this direction in Ukraine as well. Oh, so they, they can substitute uh, the referendum for, for uh, sorry, the other way around, substitute opinion polls for referendum. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so that would be really good job. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
uh, just to, to try to show you how about the yellow lights, uh, it was also quite interesting uh, in the situation when there is a high distrust uh, to the authorities, uh, how the referendum might function yeah. if it might be blocked by the authorities. I mean, the yellow lights is more critical in this situation, and some of them in the interview uh, shared a reflection that the referendum could be used as a negative tool to the correct uh, decisions which are made uh, by the authorities. So it will be, it will have the, 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 the full attempt, well, how to say, the full power of decision in order to, for example, cancel some non-popular decisions of the potential law. Just as, a, as an idea that it might be also uh, taken uh, in different modalities uh, by, by the participants uh, themselves. Uh, and for you, John, a question: uh, uh, did, what, what was it? Was it a, a wrong one or a correct conclusion from your uh, uh, demonstrations that uh, the maps produced uh, by the media uh, located on the bus uh, do not show mainly the Ukrainian territory as divided, but they mostly show two territories, like totally marked by fascism or totally marked by uh, by, by Russian uh, sympathy, as opposed to the, uh, say, Kiev representations, which are more uh, diverse and divided, uh, where the territory is divided. Mm -hmm. Or oh, it's, it's wrong. Uh -huh. uh, well, um, there are different ways of showing yeah, Ukraine. So there are narratives about uh, Ukraine divided uh, into parts. Yeah. So there are. Really, you can choose them, actually, basically. There is a very uh, uh, it is disintegrated in many, many parts. Um, so, uh, and it actually, it's more or less a new narrative, more or less uh, before the conflict it appeared, and then, uh, especially during the conflict, like uh, not only for parts, but like as much as you could imagine in a federative state or um, just in some blocks, which is not for, for Russian and so on. Um, there are also argumentation of this, you know, uh, that Ukraine is not existent, and then it is also uh, articulated by the maps, by the historical maps usually. So there are different uh, ways, and the uh, let's say uh, there is on the Ukrainian side is the discourse about unity, and it is also I can show it is articulated by uh, by maps which show the Ukraine as an ethnic territory especially before the Second World War, when uh, uh, Ukrainians were uh, in Cuba, and, uh, like the were maps produced already at that time, showing the uh, population of Ukraine in the south of Koronish, in Cuba, and the big, big Ukraine, where like, Ukrainians live, or the maps of the uh, Ukrainian People's Republic of 1918, when they claimed that uh, Ukrainian territory that and that, so the Republic didn't exist, and it was also like a big Ukraine yeah, presented on the map, together with the uh, West Ukrainian People's Republic, Zun, so called Zun. And um, yeah, so this is the discourse of unity in Kyiv, kind of the mm -hmm. uh, counter discourse kind of, and uh, it's also, also discriminated in nationalistic, national, or whatever, groups, pages, uh, and so on. So, um, and the Russian or pro-Russian discourse, which is pro-Russian, existing also in, uh, in some uh, Ukrainian media, or kind of uh, media which uh, are seen as somehow pro-Russian, or even Zelensky is somehow seen as pro-Russian, and uh, uh, also this map uh, of uh, disintegrated Ukraine is there and then he uh, uses this uh, narrative of this map or uh, in his, let's say, uh, political campaign already at that time, <laughs> I would say it was also political campaign, so uh, he used the discourse of unity and disintegration to show that he can, he is inclusive, he can unite. Um, yeah, so the Donbass uh, media produce very same, um, and in Crimea very same maps, and usually the regional maps of Russia or Donetsk um, Kivarovsky is because this uh, kind of state which existed <laughs> before that territory.
Thank you. I just want to put to go to, to a lesbian question. I, uh, I'm conducting a study of uh, subjective mapping of the society, uh, asking people to draw the society. And um, uh, one of the questions, who draws uh, more complex or more simple graphically uh, images, uh, is quite interesting because uh, we showed that finally there are several types of maps which are not only marked politically, but also by simplicity or complexity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm asking the question in the view of some of the results of my research, uh, which show that uh, those who represent uh, the current Russian or current French society as a whole piece of something, for example, an apple or just a square or something like that, uh, find themselves either on political or radical uh, point of view, and so this is a kind of criticism uh, towards the, the whole of the society. Or by those who are, when they say undereducated, so they just don't care in some, in some way. They represent the society as the whole, just like, doesn't matter. It's, it's like a theme. Uh, so I'm asking uh, what, what is undermining, except the political uh, agenda, what's undermining the complexity of the picture? If you, if you may answer uh, the question. I'm sorry, that's <laughs> my question. Uh, but <laughs> maybe you noticed, uh, I don't know how to answer it, but uh, the problem with all these maps, uh, there is one problem actually, that there is uh, always a line, like between, uh, for example, east to west, uh, has never been uh, presented uh, this kind of whole plan in Ukraine as a, not a line but a kind of space in between or something like this. So, of um, Ukraine is divided into society, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, these representations, they are uh, totally distorted because uh, there are hard lines. And uh, mm -hmm. this is about complexity and simplicity of maps, maybe. Okay. Um, we were talking about this Same topic, thing. yeah, kind of. But I'm, I'm not from, you know, this is human geography and this political geography. I, I didn't study it. I'm just interested in this. Uh, uh, became interested because it was everywhere in the media. Uh, became interested in these maps. How they also, I don't know, also during the Orange Revolution, how they were this. Uh, Frederick? No. All right, Sophie, uh, thank you very much. Um, are there any, um, are there any um, emphatic or, um, I don't know, structural uh, connections to, to Switzerland in, in these discussions? Are there any experts that they ask how, to, how that could be um, installed, um, which could also be used in, in um, pro or contra um, um, arguments? Um, I think. You had a lot of, you had a lot of, um, as I, I said, theory in there you could, could use, uh, but are there any practical um, references to, to, to that that could use, be useful or not in, in either way? Um, not, not, um, not until now. And, and ref um, about Zelensky, I, I don't know. I, I, I have to check what they ask. They refer, refer a lot to Switzerland and saying, okay, this is a measure which is uh, widespread in uh, European countries, and so we uh, need this as well. But, but yeah, it's an interesting <coughs> point to, to have a look whether they have expert commissions on this. Or, I mean, we just, or start to do that. Um, it would be interesting. Um. Just, uh, just a short comment. I, I think that there is a, a certain connection between the, the, yeah. the two talks. And one, uh, uh, what the, this uh, mostly uh, Russian or pro Russian propaganda does actually points to a very, very real issue of, uh, of real diversity in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that so far Ukraine was not able to, to cope with it. Uh, to handle it, and perhaps what Zelensky is trying to do now yeah, is uh, uh, create a common space within which uh, those uh, multiple colors could uh, could live together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just want 
with the, the referendum Zelensky and the sulfurs, which uh, I heard uh, from the media. You know, the problem with this <laughs> referendum is uh, also that uh, maybe not in the referendum itself, but uh, the way Zelensky did it and the other uh, uh, things he said. And uh, if we combine this, uh, his uh, offers about negotiations with Russia, Together with the referendum, uh, Ukrainians do not uh, have a very positive conclusion. And um, yeah, and we have this, uh, in Ukraine we have this you know, uh, experience of referendum when, um, for example, in Crimea, when, uh, in Donbass, uh, a person um, could uh, go in uh, several places a day and vote uh, for a referendum officially, multiple vote. vote. Um, there were buses like brought from the <laughs> our neighbor uh, with people who voted like this with the Russian experts. So uh, yes, yeah, so it is the question how it is possible. It's very needed. I think it's needed also to hear the people uh, and make either survey or friendly. We have different services like, uh, from having different sociological and so on. Um, they show different things. Yeah, um, and that there are diversity of different uh, points of views and so on. But this is the question how uh, how this referendum could be um, could be safe. Let's say so this is the question. And another one, uh, I'm curious. Uh, I don't know if uh, Sophie knows uh, about this. Uh, <coughs> uh, if there is uh, some polls uh, in Ukraine about the problem here. Uh, service about if people uh, would like to have a friend. This is also the question. If the, this kind of imposed initiative from the president, I know her, I'm not sure how it will be realized, uh, uh, if it is seen uh, as a positive one. Uh, hmm? Yeah, it's an important point. Yeah, but I, are there some I, 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 check. I know that there are some initiatives also from the Maybe short, 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 I think to your comment, you're absolutely right like, about the connection and also that what Zelensky is doing. That's also why I think his presidency will be interesting. And not, I'm not saying you're afraid to see say a ne negative thing. But in so far, like speaking about this prominent uh, example of negotiations with uh, Russia, they already, like two days later, they said, no, we are not um, implementing a referendum, but a special survey. And then, you know, there's this tendency to, to, to I and mean, the special survey would mean basically an opinion poll, which is of yes. course not the same. No, and the same was back in 2014 when they said, okay, we have to ask the, the people because they, they demand a referendum. And then there were, there were like heated discussions and how yeah, we have to do it now. And, and then everything happened very fast. But, but already, like it was still in, in the discourse, like speaking about referendum, but that was not just a special survey because if maybe people don't ask that <coughs> he would like to, then it's just a special survey. And you probably agree that um, survey and referendum are two very different things. And, um, well, yeah, yeah. I, I would just emphasize that if there is a positive influence of this kind, of, if it could be a positive influence of this kind of referendum, mm -hmm. not, in, not in the vote itself, which, as you rightly say, may be passed. Uh, forged and, and and whatever, but rather if you know, the, the key thing is if, if they will have a, a real public discussion, we should create a common common yeah. political space between the regions. That, that this is really the problem. Mm -hmm. And after that, then the, the result of the vote yeah. is, is perhaps less important. But if they are uh, limited to pure voting. Generally, uh, uh, the government didn't listen to the uh, eastern part or to other opinions so much. Uh, and yeah, maybe uh, in some way Zelensky tries to do it now, maybe a bit too late, but still um, it is quite inclusive as we see because uh, everybody, uh, well, a lot of people voted for him. 
and uh, well, I asked myself like how this question at the referendum would, uh, would be and how it would be understood by people because one of the biggest problem is that people and the sent referendum um, the questions in a different way it depends on how the media will show it and I talked recently with my friend from uh, Donbass and he said yeah my friends voted for the referendum and that referendum in uh, uh, Donetsk and I asked like uh, why, for what and so on and he uh, said well they voted against Maidan although <laughs> I mean, the question of the referendum wasn't about Maidan. 